Hey guys, the other day I had a question about VRFs. Yes, VRFs. V R F. Variable refrigerant flow systems. Variable refrigerant flow. Usually in class, what I tell the guys is hey, just a lot of times just say the name backwards and it will tell you. So the flow of the refrigerant is going to vary. The flow of the refrigerant is going to vary, meaning that it's going to adjust the flow of the refrigerant. Now, why would it do that? Well, most of the times we are used to having just a regular air conditioning unit like this. And inside here, we're gonna have a compressor. This compressor is going to come out and go through a condenser. From the condenser, it's gonna come out through our liquid line like this and it's going to go inside to, let's say, our metering device right here. And then from there, we're going to go to the evaporator. And then here is going to come back and it's going to come back to the compressor like this. Okay, because we've got to have the four components. Regardless, we've got to have the compressor. We've got to have the condenser. We've got to have the metering device and we have to have the evaporator. Now, typically what happens is when you guys go out there and you put these systems in, what do you do? You say, well, I need a two-ton unit. Let's say you've done a heat load calculation. So now you know that you need a two-ton unit for this, for this location. The condenser is going to be two tons. The evaporator is going to be two tons. Everything's going to match. Some engineer, someone that gets paid a lot of money, they're going to say, okay, this compressor is going to draw in this much refrigerant. And once it draws it in, it's going to compress it from this pressure to that pressure. It's going to go up to the condenser and it's going to come out through my liquid line. Metering device is going to create a pressure drop, goes into the evaporator, and then it's going to come back through the suction line here to the compressor and everything's gonna match, everything's gonna work out perfectly. But what if we had, instead of having a two ton evaporator, we had, let's say a two and a half or a three ton evaporator. What's gonna happen then? Well, remember, one very important thing is that you're gonna to have to have your refrigerant totally evaporating right here. I like to call this my predetermined point because some engineer has figured out that the last little bit of liquid refrigerant, poof, it just disappears right there, poof, it goes away. So now from this point on, we're superheating. Because of that, we're superheating in this area and we're gonna have the perfect superheat that that engineer has said that we need. We need to have this amount of refrigerant for the evaporator to work properly, for this evaporator to work properly. So now, if we, put a larger evaporator in here, what's gonna happen? Well, it's gonna require more refrigerant coming in here, which means that you're going to draw more out of the liquid line. And at the same time, you're gonna put more into the suction line. When that happens, what do you think is gonna to happen to the pressures? Well, first of all, the suction pressure is going to go up. The suction pressure is gonna go up. We can say that we have our gauge right here. Let's say we're dealing with 410A. So we're looking at 118 PSIG because that gives us 40 degrees Fahrenheit right there. So now everything's working beautifully. But if we have an evaporator that's larger than what this is designed to handle, this pressure will go up. When that pressure goes up, what's gonna to happen to this temperature? That temperature will go up. Once that temperature goes up, now let's say we want to have, let's say 75 degrees return air temperature, and let's say 55 degrees supply air temperature. So we have 75 coming in, 55, that gives us delta T of 20. Perfect, beautiful. But when we raise the temperature of the evaporator, this is gonna be warmer. Yes, it has a larger capacity, but now because the pressure has gone up, then the temperature will go up. Yes, some mechanics, they will say, well, I'll just adjust my charge. 
Well, when you start adjusting the charge, you're gonna move this predetermined point, and that's not gonna be a good thing. So the point is, everything needs to be matched. When this evaporator is larger, you're gonna have higher, pre higher suction pressure. Could we increase the speed of the compressor? Now, if we increase the speed of the compressor, then what would happen is it would draw more refrigerant out of here, and because of that, it would bring this pressure down. We would have the 40 degrees that we want, and yes, our capacity would increase. That would be perfect. That would be beautiful. The problem is that typically we are used to dealing with a single speed compressor, sometimes two speed compressors. Very rarely will we deal with a variable speed compressor out here. So now in the new units, what they have done is they don't use a permanent split capacitor here. Permanent split capacitor, PCS capacitor. They don't, PSC capacitor. They don't use a PSC capacitor. They are, they're going into the ECM motors, electronically commutated motors. Now, those are the ones that you can adjust the speed to them. Don't get the ECM motors and the VFDs confused. Don't get the two confused. The ECM are for single phase, and basically the VFDs are for three phase. But we don't want to get into all that right now. For right now, let's just say that we are going to adjust the speed of this and everything works beautifully because we were able to adjust the speed of this. Now, what would happen if we were to want, let's say, another unit here like this, so we had another evaporator. This evaporator now, if we hooked it up to, if we hooked this up to my liquid line here and my suction line right here, what would happen? If we just teed this right here, if we teed it off, what would happen? Well, my, suck, my liquid line pressure would drop and my suction pressure would go up when both of these were operating. What if we were to speed up the motor? If we were to speed up the motor, the compressor, then yes, we could maybe get it to work. But on these VRFs, variable refrigerant flow units, what they do is they have, let's say for example, a box right here. This box is going to direct the flow. This box is going to make sure that everything's working like it's supposed to. This box is going to control the flow of the refrigerant, and at the same time, it's going to get electrical signals from each of the sensors. So what happens now is when the people in this room say, hey, I want air conditioning, this box is go or this system, this thermostat is going to send a signal to this box. It's going to say, hey, send refrigerant to this unit. We're going to call this unit, let's say, let's say A, B, B because this one here, let's say this is going to be A, A, like this. Then, once the thermostat tells this, hey, we need more cooling on this side, it opens up the valves, sends it here. Once it sends it there, it sends a signal to the compressor. The compressor is automatically going to speed up and is going to draw more refrigerant out of the suction line and push more refrigerant through the liquid line. But let's say that we want a third connection. When we want a third connection, what we would do is we would hook this up to another metering device, another evaporator, and then another suction line like this. So in other words, we would have a liquid line and a suction line. We would have a liquid line and a suction line. We would have a liquid line and we would have a suction line like this coming out of the box. The system is going to send liquid through the liquid line and it's going to draw the vapor back from the suction line here to the box. The box, box controls it because it's getting a signal from each individual thermostat. And every time another one comes on, what happens? It speeds up the compressor, makes it go faster so that now it can keep up with the load so we can maintain the proper suction pressure to maintain that evaporator temperature that we want. 
let's say, for example, that uh, we want another one. Let's say we want this uh, another one here. So we're going to come out of here and we're going to go to another metering device, another evaporator. And so we have another suction line and we have another liquid line like this. This compressor is going to run even faster. The manufacturer has designed this so that this will be able to control or keep up with one, two, three, four evaporators. Four evaporators. So now we have AA, BB. We can say that we have CC here. And then let's call this one D, D right there. So now each one is going to tell this box, hey, DD, I want cooling. It's going, to it's going to send a signal to the box. The box sends it here. Let's say that these people are satisfied. That's going to shut off. That's going to shut off because they're satisfied too. They say that only these two need cooling. So what happens now is this, these two will send a signal saying, hey, I want cooling. These two send a signal saying, I don't want cooling. This will let the compressor know, hey, we all need two systems on, run at such and such speed, and it keeps up with the pressures that we need. The metering devices, they're going to maintain, as we said before, they're going to maintain that predetermined point right where it's supposed to be because some engineer has decided that this is where the last little tiny bit of liquid needs to disappear. This PDP right here. The engineer wants it here because the engineer knows that this is where we have enough refrigerant to absorb the heat to equal that tonnage. That's why superheat is very, very important. Now, the next thing is, as these wind down, let's say this one shuts off first, and then this one, and then this one, and then this one's satisfied. This compressor is going to adjust its speed because if not, as they turn off, what's going to happen is the suction pressure is going to drop too much, too much, too much. What happens when the suction pressure drops down to 101 PSI, a 410A system? You, that equals to 32 degrees. So the coils will start to freeze. This compressor is going to run fast enough to keep it at a good evaporator temperature, but not too cold. Once they load up, suction pressure will go up. The box will let this know, hey, we need you to speed up. It speeds up and it brings that pressure back down to where it's supposed to be to maintain it. All along, what are we doing? We're adjusting the flow of refrigerant coming out of the unit. So basically, variable refrigerant flow systems, VRFs. That's really what they're doing. This box, this box, you have to take good care of the, this box. It cannot take any dirt, moisture, trash being in the system. That's one of the reasons why the manufacturers will want you to run nitrogen through the lines as you are brazing. <clears throat> you got to pull a real, real good vacuum. And of course, we know we need to pull a vacuum down to what? 500 microns. Got to pull a real good vacuum on this. Some manufacturers may want you to go lower than that. This is another reason why you need to read the instructions. Plus, running the nitrogen through the lines will keep the carbon from building up inside. If you keep that carbon from building up, then this box is going to stay clean. Because remember, this is a sealed system. Nothing should be able to get in. The only, the only things that are in the system is what we have left in. So if we do not leave carbon in there, we do not leave moisture in there, this is going to stay very clean. It's going to last for a long, long time. But this box is what controls all of this, the flow to this. There are some systems where you may have two or three boxes, depending on the outdoor unit. So this is a very quick rundown of the very VRF systems. I hope this helped. My name is Julio. Make sure you follow me on Facebook and subscribe to my page here on YouTube. And if you have any suggestions, please let me know. Send me a message. 
That's why I'm doing this one, because someone was asking about VRF systems. Thank you.